I'm Carolyn, your host, and welcome to this week's Acro Mini, your bite-sized workshop on the hottest acro topics. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments, and we'll do our best to get those answered for you right away. And if you know another teacher who should hear about today's topic, be a friend, tag them right now and let them know we're here. Today, we're thrilled to bring you a special presentation with our resident acro dance preschool expert, Loren Dermody. Loren has been with Acrobatic Arts since the beginning, and she continues to share her creativity and years of experience towards the growth of new programs and the expansion of the syllabus. She is an acrobatic arts course conductor, examiner, head of research and development for the company, as well as being the host for the Acrobatic Arts podcast. So let's discover the transformative impact of physical literacy in early acro dance education with Loren. Let's welcome her. We'll queue up this presentation as we delve into essential techniques and insights to empower young dancers on their journey to success. So here we go. Just give me a moment to click things over and we will get started. Welcome, Loren. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Loren, and I'm excited to do a short presentation on physical literacy. You might be asking, is it essential for dance and acro teachers to be familiar with physical literacy? Well, at Acrobatic Arts, we say yes, 100% yes. A dance and acro teacher should be familiar with physical literacy for several reasons. Here are just a few of them. It will help the teacher structure their class to ensure that students are developing the fundamental movement skills, coordination and control. Physical literacy also promotes inclusivity. So this will allow the teacher to adapt their teaching methods and cater to these students who have diverse abilities in their class. It will equip the teacher with a broader range of teaching styles. Teachers who are familiar with physical literacy concepts can communicate effectively with parents and caregivers about the importance of a balanced and holistic approach to physical development. Overall, we feel that learning about physical literacy will allow the dance and acro teachers to provide a more comprehensive and effective learning experience for their students, promoting not only technical proficiency in dance and acrobatics, but also we hope the students will develop a lifelong appreciation for physical activity and well being. You might be asking, what exactly is physical literacy? Probably the first thing that comes to your mind, and it's the most common understanding of the term literacy, is it pertains to the proficiency in reading and writing. But there's also an alternative definition, and in the broader context, the term literacy can signify expertise or knowledge in a specific field or subject, and that's how we're using it when we talk about physical literacy. You can also think of it as um, to become someone who can read and write, you must first learn the alphabet. To become someone who can do math, you need to learn the numbers first. And to become someone who can participate in dance and acrobatics, you must be able to perform the basic fundamental movement skills first. This is a great definition that I found on the International Physical Literacy Association site. Physical literacy can be described as the motivation, confidence, physical competence, knowledge, and understanding to value and take responsibility for engagement in physical activities for life. So we really are setting up our young dancers or maybe our new dancers in physical success in all aspects of their life. So when we're talking about physical literacy today, I will be referencing our preschool syllabi that we have, and we have two of them. But um, we're generally talking about the ages three to five, and I would even open it up to probably two to seven years old. So that's the age range that we are talking about. And I feel there's three major components to physical literacy, motivation, physical competency, and confidence. And really these can go in any order, but if you think of them as in a circle, they really rely on each other. So if we start with motivation, we want to motivate the dancers to 
practice these physical skills. When they practice these physical skills, they will become competent in them. And when they become competent in them, then they'll start to feel confident in them. And so once they are confident, that's going to motivate them to do more physical skills. And then it just keeps going in a circle. So let's start with motivation. How are we going to motivate this age group? Well, in our preschool classes, we play games. We use their imagination. We get them excited to be moving. So for instance, we have a frog game. So we're going to use our imagination. We'll say the mat is water. Maybe we'll put green dots to be lily pads that they have to do their frog jumps. So we're getting them motivated and excited to do their physical activity, which is the frog jump. So they will start on one dot or one lily pad and then they will do their big frog jumps down the mat and they're having fun while they're doing it. Our syllabus Ready Set Acro has three wonderful acro friends that support and guide the dancers to do their activities. So we have Flexi the Giraffe, Flip the Penguin, and Bridgie the Elephant. So you can always have your acro friends with you when you're in acro class. Another way to motivate your dancers is by singing songs that they already know. I'm going to play you an example of singing Row, Row, Row Your Boat in class, but we are going to be working on butterfly stretch as we are singing the song. So the dancers are going to be sitting with the soles of their feet together, their knees open, and we're going to sing the song. So let's listen. And sing. Row, row, row your boat, gently down the street. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Wake up. <laughs> So again, of course, you want to fall asleep at the end so you can put your head on your hands and then you're going to want to wake up and then you can sing it again. So they're having fun singing the songs, but we are stretching in our butterflies. Another great motivation tool is to have them watch something and hear something and then do it themselves. Acrobatic Arts has a wonderful cardio for our preschool age. It's called Cardio Time. It's on our YouTube channel, so feel free to go use it as much as you want in your classes. Some of you are probably already using it. Uh, I'll just play you a little bit of it right now. Do the downward dog, straight legs, strong arms. Come on, you puppies, let's finish strong. Go, jump, everybody, jump, 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 jump everybody, jump. jump. Lift your arms and your legs and hold strong. Hold strong. Hold strong. Yeah. Hold strong. Hold strong. Who's strong? Who's strong? You're strong. You're strong. Up on your feet. Jump, everybody. Jump. 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 Everybody. Jump. 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 Everybody. Jump. Jump. It's cardio time. Now keep your knees up. Can they get up and down as quick as we would like? No, but are they being physically active and improving their physical skills? Yes. So that's a great one. And those are all great tools to motivate your dancers and acrobats in your classes. Now, what exactly are we motivating them to do? So what skills are we working on and what skills do we want them to master as part of their physical learning and their physical literacy? These are the basic fundamental movement skills, walking, running, jumping, hopping, stretching, balancing, and I also included throwing and catching, even though it's not a part of our genre, but in a preschool class, I feel it's easy to add props that they can work on their throwing and catching, which is an important part of their physical literacy. I'll give you a few examples of some of the skills that we do in our syllabi uh, for 
reaching the goals of the physical literacy skills. So we have bear walk, crab walk, tightrope walk, of course, that's all walking. We have marching, which is a bigger, more energetic form of walking. Then we move to faster, more running type skills. So we have our skipping, which is also including uh, the hops on one foot. Uh, we have gallops. For jumps, we do frog jumps, tuck jumps, stretching. We have forward bend and butterfly. Remember, these are only a few. It would take me so long to get through the list. Uh, and with our stretching, we always want to do strength. So we also have a superhero for strength and tabletop and stretching and strength go hand in hand in both our syllabi. For balancing, of course, we would do one foot balance and uh, rising on demi point. But a few harder ones that are more acro specific would be a big bridge and also a handstand at the wall. So you can imagine that that's sort of taking the balancing to a different level in our preschool acro and dance classes. As I mentioned, we also use the props for throwing and catching. So you could use scarves, which are nice and easy to throw and catch for the young ones. Bean bags, those are also great for balancing, but throwing and catching as well. And of course, balls would be good. So all of those things will help your dancers achieve the physical literacy learning that they need to in order to progress and not just in dance and acrobatics but really in every aspect of their life which you know i think preschool teachers should give themselves a pat on the back because we're really doing a great service to these young dancers so after they become competent in these skills, then we're going to work on their confidence. So sometimes just achieving a balance, you know, standing on one foot or doing their big bridge will, will make them confident and they will know. Sometimes we have to give them a little extra. So we have stickers and I love both our Ready Set Acro stickers and our Acro Dance Preschool stickers because they are acro specific. So the dancers get to look at them, they can mimic the pictures, they can tell their parents what they've been working on from the pictures in the stickers. They can also show people the skills. So it could be as easy as show and tell. Uh, sometimes I call it dance and tell or acro and tell with their class. So they get to show the skill while everybody's sitting and watching and then of course would clap. They could have a viewing week with their parents and show their skills, which is always fun. And the parents, you know, video and send it to grandma and grandpa and their aunts and uncles. And, you know, then everyone's talking about how much they're learning and how great they're getting, which really builds their confidence. And they could do a year end show or maybe an in studio show at your studio. Anything that sort of displays the skills that they're learning to let them know that they're really doing a great job and to keep it up. We also have report cards in both of our syllabi, and this is great. You can write a teacher's report on this one. You can put stickers, the Acro stickers in it. Uh, the Acro friends are on the Ready, Set, Acro report card. We also have certificates in both, and certificates, again, will be a great reminder of how hard they worked in your class and the skills that they were able to achieve in your class. Ready, Set, Acro even has a medal for your dancers at the end of the session or the end of the year when they complete their Acro skills. And then it would go back to the motivation. So you can see how the circle works. You can really start at any point, but we wanna motivate these dancers. We want them to be physically competent in their skills and their, increase their confidence. And then it just goes around and around and they get better and better and more uh, physically active. So another great statement that I saw online was from activeforlife.com. And they say, children will always play given the opportunity, but children who are physically literate will be more confident and will have more fun playing because they know how to jump, run, throw, and all the rest. So that was my short presentation. I hope you can see how important 
physical literacy is in structuring your classes, running your classes, and helping the dancers and acrobats become more physically active. So happy teaching everyone, and I wish you all the best. Amazing. Thank you so much, uh, Miss Loren. Once again, not only the theoretical, but that so important practical and helping our teachers see the why so that they can then put it into the what, where, and how. Amazing. Okay. So if you're interested in learning more about physical literacy, starting an acro program for your youngest dancers, or leveling up your current program, you're in luck because as Loren mentioned, Acrobatic Arts has two preschool programs. Now, recently we were excited to have launched alongside our friends at Ready, Set, Dance, our Ready, Set, Acro program. Now, Ready, Set, Acro contains all the curriculum you love from acrobatic arts with the station cards, imaginative, imaginative and play-based learning, physical and social literacy, and games combined with the branding, original catchy music lyrics with built-in cues, marketing materials, and business strategies that Ready, Set, Dance is known for. New characters, Flexi, Bridget, and Flip bring the fun together through songs and rewards, including the new Ready, Set, Acro report cards, as Miss Lorenz showed us, certificates and medals for your classes. Preschoolers and parents will love Ready, Set, Acro. I'll put the link in the comments so that you can find out more about this amazing program. Thank you again, Loren. Thank you, teachers. Join us again next time. Bye.